first off, happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, awesome. Uh, and we're here in the spirit of that for sure. Um, I'm Tom Stoser, City Planning Director, uh, and a member of the City Sustainability Commission. Uh, and I am delighted to be here for a very important announcement about the Growing Green Initiative. Uh, the Growing Green Initiative, or GGI, as we call it for short, launched in May of 2014, and it is Mayor Rawlings Blake's program to use sustainable, innovative, cost-effective greening practices to stabilize and reuse vacant land. Uh, since the launch, the Growing Green Initiative has made a tremendously positive impact in our city, and it really does that through a multifaceted approach. Um, we have stabilized lots with fencing to deter dumping, to create safe spaces, and maintain lots in our neighborhoods as clean and green. We've awarded $300,000 in funding through the Growing Green Design Competition to implement winning designs in half a dozen specific areas. And that was combined funding from the EPA, from the Chesapeake Bay Trust, and from the City Department of Public Works. Um, we've piloted a new program called Care -A -Lot, uh, where we've provided stipends directly to community members to mow and maintain vacant lots in their neighborhood. We're also, with the help of universities, studying different grass seed and soil amendments to see what grows best on our vacant lots post-demolition and what requires less mowing and what types of grasses community members actually want in their neighborhoods. We've hired a community organizer to work directly with residents to support them to create community-managed open spaces in their neighborhoods. We've launched, in partnership with the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts, the Lots Alive program, which is a grant program for temporary public art on vacant lots throughout the city. And we've received $300,000 from a Wells Fargo U.S. Conference of Mayors grant to launch the Growing Green Tracks project, which is a workforce development program to create green spaces along the Amtrak corridor in East Baltimore. Uh, I have to say, that's a pretty impressive list of accomplishments in just two years. And I I'd like to recognize our staff, um, Jenny Guillaume and Alice Kennedy and members of the Sustainability <laughs> Office. So, and, and really, I think the most exciting thing is we are just getting started. Um, and here to tell you more about what's next and about her truly awesome commitment to creating green and sustainable neighborhoods across this city is our Honorable Mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Thank you so much, Tom, and I appreciate you representing in, in green today for Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, I am uh, grateful to be here on making this significant uh, announcement as we uh, celebrate with many around the world this, uh, this day that we recognize the importance of being good stewards for our environment. I want to thank you for joining us and I want to thank all of our partners for being here, all of our community partners who are here and I want to thank my agencies that have worked so hard uh, to get us where we are, Department of uh, Planning, Department of Housing, and the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts. Uh, as Tom says, my administration is very committed to addressing vacant lots in our community uh, with innovative strategies and partnerships to combat blight. How are you doing, uh, Councilwoman Middleton? I almost didn't recognize you, Blondie. <laughs> I like your hair. Uh, um, the, the Councilwoman is, is my Councilwoman, and, and we certainly have worked hard in uh, the, the Park Heights area to, to transform uh, vacant lots into community green spaces. So it's, it was serendipitous that she walked through at this moment. Um, but, you know, we have innovative strategies to um, combat uh, blight, uh, 
crime and crime, because we know so often they go together. And that's why I'm here this morning. Uh, we have a very important announcement. I'm very proud to announce an additional $500,000 dedicated to the Growing Green Initiative. With this $500,000, we will be able to work with targeted neighborhoods that suffer from high areas of high rates of vacancy and offer comprehensive approaches to mitigating the negative impact of vacant lots. Throughout the coming growing season, we will be working with residents to identify over 200 vacant lots that need to be improved to be clean and green. The baseline of greening will include receding, uh, we'll do fencing, cleaning of brush, pruning of trees, and planting of new trees, which is always exciting as we try to, uh, Councilman Scott, as we work together to, to uh, green our canopy around the city. A clean and green approach uh, to repurposing vacant lots provides benefits by stabilizing these areas as green spaces, beautifying the vacant lots for passive recreation and community socializing. Uh, and when we know because we have seen when we've greened these lots and made them more beautiful, it's a deterrent for people who look to these green, these vacant lots as uh, fertile ground for dumping, right? So we're going to prep these sites for redevelopment and for additional greening treatments. In addition to cleaning up and sprucing up these lots, we have available all the programs that Thomas mentioned to further enhance these sites, including Lots Alive for fun temporary public arts projects, Care -a -lot to provide community-based groups with up to $5,000 in funding to maintain these sites for the growing season. Neighborhood greening grants through Parks and People Foundation. I want to give a shout out to our partner for partners from Parks and People. <laughs> Offering up to $1,000 plus hands-on support from community organizing for greening projects. Finally, for each of the targeted communities who work with our Growing Green Initiative to create a special and uh, to create a special enhanced community managed open space for their neighborhoods in collaboration with designers and for not for profits. These enhanced sites can be focal points for social activities. We have seen it happen and a source of pride for neighborhoods and residents. Our whole approach with the greening, uh, Growing Green Initiative is based on uh, talking and listening to neighbors about their needs and what they would like to see. Uh, as far as green space in the neighborhood. And the vision of this initiative and the additional $500,000 in green funds for targeted communities will show visible results. We will continue to partner with communities to transform liabilities into assets, improve neighborhood quality of life, and help spur further redevelopment and revitalization. Again, I want to thank all of our community partners who are here representing every side of, side of the city, northeast, West and South, uh, thank you for uh, your hard work and for your partnership in helping us to realize the goals of our growing green initiative, building a cleaner and greener and healthier Baltimore together. I want to thank you so very, very much and bring up one of our hardworking uh, community members, Ms. Terry Booker, board member and community development chair for the new Broadway East Community Association. Who, who I feel like is my twin today. I feel like we got dressed together today in our matching pantsuits. So it's happy Friday, happy Earth Day, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. I think we're going to have Ms. Denise Richards as well join us up here. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> the more the merrier. I was going to call Denise because she thought she was getting out of this one. But I was going to call her to the front as well. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everyone. I am, again, Terry Booker from the New Broadway East Community Association. I am the chair of our community development section. I would like to thank Jenny and all of her help with uh, our, grow our green spaces in the New Broadway East Community Association because we do have a lot of them. On well, last year, we were part of the Care, Care Lot um, uh, program where we had one of our community members for a couple of years who would actually mow our center, the center of our community association green space. He would mow that uh, lawn for us for free. On last year, we were able to, because of that program, we were able to give him a little stipend to help with the mowing and to well, as well to keep up with his lawnmower to get that fixed. So we thank you for that initiative as well. 
the center of our community, that green space is where we come together to have our cookouts, to have our movie nights, to have our back to school nights. So we are also working with Jenny to make it look like a little park um, with one of the programs that she is helping us with as well so that our community can again come together and we'll all feel like family in a park with some um, walkways and some trees and uh, some game tables. So thank you for the design for that with Department of Recs and Parks as well. Thank you, Denise. Well, pretty much I'm just going to kind of reiterate a lot of what Terry said and we really appreciate you, Jenny for um, keeping us on the course and making sure our initial paperwork was processed properly. Um, also, one of the lots, we have a flower factory that will be coming about, which will be a tremendous um, initiative for our community because residents can come and purchase flowers. We're envisioning around the holiday time with Christmas trees and it would be lit up with white lights along the Gay Street corridor, which would um, bring invite more people to come into the community. Um, uh, pretty much what Madam Mayor said, having uh, the lots redone would, you know, deter a lot of crime and a lot of dumping that we have. So we really appreciate this initiative. Um, We'd just like to thank everyone. We look forward to doing this again next year. Um, we're actually applying for the funding again. So um, with that being said, we'd just like to thank everyone. Thank the y'all guests and Madam Mayor. Jenny and Mr. Silver, thank you very much. Our, our thanks really go to you for your commitment to the neighborhood and uh, your partnership. And I also want to recognize a couple of our other really important neighborhood partners who are here. We have Mark Washington from Cold Spring Homestead Montebello. <laughs> Roscoe Johnson from Druid Heights. Wanda Bess from Upton, and Cheo Burley from Park Heights. So in addition to New Broadway East, each of these neighborhoods is going to be the beneficiary of these specific targeted funds to really make a transformational impact on the existing vacant lots in these areas as, as a building block to future revitalization. So we are truly excited about that. Uh, on a, particularly on a day like this, Earth Day. And I'm just going to conclude by also making sure we adequately thank our city agency partners who have been so instrumental in making this work. There are some complexities involved with uh, making sure everybody's got the, the proper rights and permits to go ahead and make these critical improvements. So. Uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, Julie Day is here, thank you so much. Uh, the Department of Public Works, the Department of Recreation and Parks, and the Department of Transportation are all also play roles in this. And then finally, our uh, nonprofit partners, again, Parks and People and Civic Works, thank you so much for being here. So with that, Please uh, go ahead and enjoy the rest of Earth Day and the rest of this great spring season. Thank you.